Depending on which science fiction you want to reference, the researchers here at the University of Constance in Germany have either built a holodeck from Star Trek, or The Matrix, or something kind of like the old alien abductions from the X-Files. It's just that they've built it for locusts. One of the great challenges in studying collective behaviour is that there's this intricate network of interactions among the individuals that we can't see, we can't control. And so it's really difficult to understand how these locusts with their local interactions can scale up to swarms that can extend across hundreds of square kilometres. We thought, what if we could have individuals moving and interacting with virtual swarms? And so that's why we've designed this setup. What we do is we put the animal on this large motion compensating sphere. As the animal moves, the sphere always moves to keep it on top. And so it can move in a never-ending desert environment. And by tracking that movement, we know where the animal's gone. The locusts believe these virtual individuals to be other locusts. They will tend to align their direction of travel with near individuals. They will think of themselves as being within a real swarm. Locusts don't have depth perception in the way that humans do. Prey animals generally have eyes on each side of their head, trading off 3D vision for a much wider field of view. So there's no need for sci-fi holographic systems or tiny little 3D glasses here. As long as they keep an exact track on the locust's eye position and update the screen fast enough, it seems to fool them. I'll be honest, I do find this a little bit unsettling, and it's only going to get more unsettling from here. Ultimately, decision-making is made in the brain of the animal. So if we are to understand these vast swarms, we actually need to go in and look at how the brain processes this information. So in this VR, we're basically plugging into the spinal cord. The animal here is tethered, it has to be held in place, but it can still walk freely on a ball that's elevated by air so it doesn't have friction, allowing the locust again to move and interact with a virtual swarm. So we know what the animal's responding to, but now we can also decode the neural signals that are underlying the decisions it's making. So locusts impact the livelihood of one in 10 people on the planet through food shortage. They contribute to humanitarian crises across the globe. Yet, no one understood why they form swarms. So the researchers here have also commissioned this massive imaging hangar and are going to track thousands of locusts individually by attaching tiny retro-reflective tags to each one and using a motion capture system with more than 30 cameras. Sub-millimetre precision, 100 frames a second. Again, I had questions, starting with, where do you order thousands of locusts from? Well, luckily for us, it turns out that entomophagy, or eating insects, is becoming an important aspect for humans and also for agriculture, for farm animals. So there are actually huge locust breeding centers. We collaborate with them and so they bred the insects for us. We have a whole team of experienced individuals from senior professors to undergraduate students all working together, gluing these little tags on the individuals. And this allows us to see the three-dimensional information much, much more easily than we could using many video cameras. The imaging hangar is 15 by 15 by 8 meters. It's designed to mimic the environment in which locusts have evolved. We have extremely bright lights that capture the natural wavelengths of light that they experience. We have the correct temperature around 27, 28 degrees centigrade within this large space. So we're first we're looking at the locusts in different densities to see which different structures and patterns form. But then we also want to understand how these voracious insects eat their way through crops and also how they avoid predators when doing so. So we're also startling the individuals to see how social behavior also influences their response to predators. When the insects hatch, they're flightless. In fact, they're flightless for the first two months of their lives. It's only in the final adult stage that they take to the wing. And so the critical stage for understanding the swarms and also controlling them is these flightless juveniles. And this is about 10,000 locusts. There are questions about testing on insects, of course, but the consensus right now is that they're insects. And as long as there's no unnecessary harm caused, the trade-off is well worth it. These would have been ground up for animal feed, after all, and the world doesn't have a problem with that. And locust swarms aren't cooperative. Researchers have discovered that locusts march in formation because traveling in the same direction at the same speed is the easiest way for each individual to avoid being eaten by other locusts. If humans can understand this swarm's behavior, maybe we can start to understand the gigantic, devastating swarms with billions or even trillions of locusts, the ones that destroy food supplies. Or maybe we can start to improve the forecasting tools, because right now the only methods the world has to deal with devastating locust plagues are vast amounts of industrial pesticides 
and hope. I find it astonishing that there are pest insects that impact so many people on the planet and yet there's so little research into this. And one of the main reasons is that the people that really uh, are impacted by locusts, they're subsistence farmers. They can't afford agrochemicals. You also have countries where they've got other problems to deal with, such as internal strife and conflicts. The last experiments we did with locusts uh, when I was based in Oxford, we had, I think the most was 110 individuals. To approximate what they're doing in nature, we need to start looking at tens of thousands of individuals. The key here is that we need these very large scale experiments to be that bridge between the lab and the wild. One of the amazing things about locusts is that the swarms just suddenly appear out of nowhere. And so what we're trying to mimic here is as population density increases, we think that these swarms will suddenly emerge. They'll suddenly start marching together in unison. We're just beginning to understand the wonders of collectives, how groups of neurons communicate with each other to allow animals to make decisions, and then how social interactions connect brains together, such as in locust swarms. So we think locusts can sense the environment through this communication within the swarm. This gives them a swarm intelligence that's beyond the brain of any individual. We can use this to begin to understand how and why these swarms form, and therefore how we can best minimize the impact on humans. It's a couple of hours later. Uh, the imaging hangar has been uh, blocked off from all humans for a little while, and the researchers here are now seeing marching behavior that has never been observed in the lab before. It's only ever been in the wild. It's, it's working and they've come up with like a dozen ideas for new experiments in the last 10 minutes. This is brilliant.